One of the world's largest issues as of late is China. The second largest economy and Asia's leader has been undergoing international and domestic pressure, led by the myriad of debts its entire economy accumulated, which caused one of the largest housing bubbles in the entire history of China, but not limited to it, as the economy is also plagued with improbable domestic policy, which continuously sees a zero-COVID policy. However, we will not address the extent of China's crisis in today's video, what we will do is highlight the largest parts and how it will impact the Philippines. Initially, what led to the Chinese economic slowdown in the past months was due to three important factors. The first is because of greed and debt. Much of what we understood about the growth of the Chinese economy was that while it was growing, it was also using a tremendous amount of debt. One of its largest debt-driven sectors, housing, is currently undergoing a massive collapse due to the greed of of many corporations. It led to the construction of ghost cities and useless investments that made some people worth so much on paper. Eventually, the bubble popped and a domino affected a lot of other industries. But that was not the end of its debt problems, like how the housing sector grew. The entire company had also relied on a bulk load of debt to fuel its entire economy, which is raising questions about whether this is sustainable. According to the Bank of International Settlements, by the end of 2020, China's total debt to GDP has approached nearly that of the United States, at approximately 300 percent. Although from here on out, what lies ahead is still unpredictable and presumably manageable. If consistent issues like these continue to prop up, it could spell trouble for the entire Chinese economy. The continued issue, however, is another risk. You see, the other factor driving the fear of Chinese economic slowdown is due to its own government. Most people would probably think that the Chinese government would do everything it can to fix its own economy. That did not happen. While some policies did support many issues, they are still persistent in one infamous strategy, zero COVID policy. The government of China is still persistent in locking their own megacities and millions of people and limiting economic productivity around the country in hopes of beating out COVID. While the rest of the world has opened up, China is still in lockdown mode. This also means that many of its industries, from manufacturing to retail to entertainment, are either limited or closed off. If we add up all of the issues in China, along with slowing demand for Chinese-made products and foreign investments due to international problems, the ultimate problem then becomes dire. And here's the thing. We have yet to even mention the largest factor unfavored internationally, a crackdown in its own technology sector. The Chinese government continues to claim that many of its corporations have been gaining too much power and establishing market dominance. Therefore, it led them to write billions of dollars of fines, forcing them to reform and push out regulations to deteriorate the tech sector's financial well-being. The impact of all these? The company's valuation from the Alibaba Group to Tencent Holdings has dropped drastically. Alibaba, once known as one of the world's most valuable and beloved companies valued at over $800 billion, is now less than $140 billion. The issue then raised is very tragic, since it was both a mix of unfavorable government policies, corporation mismanagement, and a looming international recession, which are all pointing to a slowdown of the Chinese economy. Okay, so how does this apply to the Philippines? Well, here's the thing that we have to look at. We we need to discern what industries the Philippines is reliant upon China. Particular aspects are paving the way for billions of dollars from China to the Philippines. Only then will we be able to understand whether China's slowdown will impact that of the Philippines. The massive sectors that we have identified are divided into three parts, tourism, investments in debt, and trade. Now, a lot of arguments can go into play to the extent that the Philippines isn't really at risk with China since their connection is very insignificant, especially compared to other nations. But let us see in more detail. The first of the three is the tourism sector, which is arguably the largest proportion of direct impact from China to the Philippines. According to the Department of Tourism of the Philippines, Chinese tourists before COVID had around 1.7 million tourist arrivals. The second largest is just behind South Korea, which had over 1.9 million in 2019. Here is the issue with these. 
Chinese, or even tourism in general, contribute to the entire economy. Although not as large as other industries, they are still part of the contribution. For instance, when a Chinese individual arrives in the Philippines, they would eventually spend money. Some do it for luxury, leading to the payment of accommodations, food, and whatever it may be. Add it all up, it sums to over $2.3 billion, according to the Department of Tourism. $2.3 billion in spending pre-COVID would seem low, however, it is still enough to employ tens of thousands of people, and it is 0.58% of the total GDP of the Philippines. Therefore, the slowdown of the Chinese economy simply means that this spending will slow down and any future spending will be impacted. The second aspect is China's investment and debt. And here is where and why China's economic impact would be unseen. Because contrary to what most people think that the country is heavily reliant on Chinese investments and debt, it is actually the exact opposite. According to the Central Bank of the Philippines, the total external debt owed to China is just $2.2 billion. And according to the National Economic and Development Authority, Chinese-led projects are only valued at half a billion dollars. Compare that to Japan-led projects valued at $11 billion. Therefore, even if China's economy slows and it impacts the way they invest globally, it wouldn't affect the Philippines heavily, since they are lacking in these. However, do take note that since there is always a huge future potential between the two, the opportunity cost would then be the one affected. The final factor, which is trade, would probably be the most important. Since exports made from the Philippines to China are over $11.5 billion as of the end of 2021, these exports make China the second largest destination, just behind the United States at $11.8 billion. These all suggest that with China's economic slowdown, the purchases made from the Philippines to China would also feel a pinch. Furthermore, this does not even include trade with Hong Kong, which is valued at $9.9 .9 billion. Therefore, the two hold a collection of more than $20 billion. The probability that their purchase from the Philippines to grow would be in risky territories if China's economy continues to slow. Now, these are just three of the largest factors contributing to the China-Philippines economic relationship, but do note that there are more factors out there. Most people, after knowing these or even factors unidentified in this video, would then lay claim that the Philippines would not be impacted by China by at least a huge margin and compared to other nations. Well, here's the thing. If China's slowdown impacts, for example, Singapore or Indonesia, it would also indirectly then impact the Philippines. Therefore, a report published by the World Bank in 2015 stated that a 1% decline in China's growth rate would shave 0.4 to 0.8% off the GDP of the Philippines. That simply means the connection between the two nations is very large, both directly and indirectly. In more quantitative measures, this simply means that for every 1% decline in China's GDP, it would shave off around $1.6 to $3.2 billion of the growth in the Philippines. And that is just 1%. What more if China's economic slowdown decreases to 2 or 3 percent? Further, one of the key reasons for this is that China is the factory of the world. Almost everything is made there, and almost all of the raw materials are sent there. Therefore, countries that rely most on China would feel the pinch. A lot of products in the Philippines are imported from China. With a slowing economy and a manufacturing industry, it will also diminish a lot of finished goods and commodities. But let us not disregard the fact that China could still grow. The slowdown is still subject to a lot of factors, factors that China could still fix by opening their economy, implementing the right policies to once again attract export-oriented products, and supporting back their own technology sector. Furthermore, even though China's economy may feel this economic slowdown, these are all short-term. What we should look towards is the long-term. Eventually, China's economy would grow enough to become the world's largest economy. This also means that whatever the Philippines is relying on China, they would also benefit in the end. 
So in summary, these risks are subject to the coming months, not the coming years. Likewise, the slowdown of China's economy can still be fixed, but in the same way, the economic meltdown could be way worse than first thought. But do let us know what you think. Thanks for watching.